Chapter 17 Pramaya The Jeevas Free from Maya Brajanath's grandmother completed all the arrangements for his marriage, and in the evening she explained everything to him. Brajanath simply took his meal in silence and made no reply that day. He lay awake on his bed late that night, deep in thought about the state of the pure spirit soul. Meanwhile, his elderly grandmother was busy trying to find ways of convincing him to agree to the marriage. Just then, Brajanath's maternal cousin, Vaini Madhava, arrived. The girl that Brajanath was supposed to marry was Vaini Madhava's paternal cousin, and Vijay Vidyaratna had sent him to finalize the agreements. Vaini Madhava inquired, What's the matter, grandmother? Why are you delaying in arranging brother Braja's marriage? The grandmother replied in a rather anxious voice, My son, you are an intelligent boy. Perhaps he will change his mind if you speak to him. All my efforts have been in vain. Vaini Madhav's character was clearly proclaimed by his short stature, small neck, black complexion, and his eyes which blinked frequently. He liked to pry into everything that was going on, rather than taking care of his own business. But his involvement in others' affairs was never particularly useful. After listening to the old lady, he frowned slightly, then boasted, This is no problem. I just need your permission. Vaini Madhav can accomplish anything. You know me quite well. I can make money just by counting the waves. Let me discuss this with him just once, and if I succeed, then you'll treat me to a nice feast of puris and kachuris. Brajanath has taken his meal, and he's asleep now, said Grandmother. All right, I'll come in the morning and put things in order, replied Vaini Madhava, and returned home. The next day, he returned early in the morning carrying a lota in his hand, and completed his morning ablutions. When Brajanath saw him, he was a little surprised and said, Brother, how have you come so early in the morning? Vaini Madhava answered, Dada, you have been studying and teaching Nyaya Shastra for a long time now. You are the son of Pandit Harinath Chudamani, and you have become famous all over the country. You are the only surviving male member of the house, and if you don't have any heirs, who do you suppose will take care of this big house of yours? Brother, we have a request. Please get married. Brajanath replied, Brother, don't give me unnecessary trouble. Nowadays I'm accepting the shelter of Sri Gaur Sundara's Bhaktas, and I don't have any desire to get involved in worldly affairs. I feel real peace in the company of the Vaishnavas in Mayapur, and I don't find any attraction for this world. I will either accept sannyas or spend my life in the shelter of the Vaishnava's lotus feet. I have expressed my heart to you because I know that you are my close friend, but don't disclose this to anyone else. Vaini Madhava understood that nothing but trickery could change Brajanath's mind, so he cleverly curbed his feelings, and in order to create a particular impression, he said, I have always remained your assistant in whatever you have done. I used to carry your books when you were studying in the Sanskrit school, so I will carry your staff and water pot when you accept sannyas. It is difficult to understand the minds of wicked people. They have two tongues and they say one thing with one, and exactly the opposite with the other. They are bandits in the garb of saints, carrying the name of Sri Ram in the mouth and a knife under the armpit. Brajanath was a simple person. Warming to Vaini Madhava's sweet words, he said, Brother, I have always regarded you as my dear friend. Grandmother is just an old woman, and she doesn't understand serious matters. She is very enthusiastic to drown me in this ocean of worldly affairs by getting me married to some girl. It will be a relief if you can change her mind and somehow dissuade her. I will always be indebted to you. Vaini Madhava replied, No one will dare to oppose your desire as long as Shamarama is living. Dada, you will see what I am capable of. But just let me know one thing. Why have you developed such hatred towards this world? Who is advising you to cultivate such feelings of renunciation? Brajanath explained about his renunciation and said, There is one elderly and experienced Babaji 
called Raghunath Das Babaji in Mayapur. He is my instructor, and I go every day after dusk to the shelter of his feet to find relief from the burning fire of this material world. He is very merciful to me. The evil Vaini Madhava started thinking, Now I understand Brother Brudger's weakness. He has to be brought back to the right track by deception, force, or skill. Outwardly, he said, Brother, don't worry, I'm going home now, but I will gradually change Grandmother's mind. Vaini Madhava pretended to take the road that led to his home, but instead he took another way and reached Shiva Sangha in Mayapur. There he sat on the raised platform under the Bakula tree and began to admire the opulences of the Vaishnavas. These Vaishnavas are actually enjoying the world. They have such beautiful houses and lovely kunjas. This is such a nice dais in a wonderful courtyard. In each of the kutiyas, a Vaishnava sat chanting Hari Nam on his beads. They seemed quite content, like the bulls of religion. The women of the neighboring villages, who came to bathe in the Ganga, of their own accord supplied the Vaishnavas with fruits, vegetables, water, and various edibles. Vaini Madhava thought, The Brahmanas have systemized Karma Kanda to receive these facilities, but instead these groups of Babajis are enjoying the cream. All glories to Kali Yuga. These disciples of Kali are having a wonderful time. Oh, my birth in a high Brahmana family is useless. No one even cares about us any more. What to speak of offering us fruits and water? These Vaishnavas even condemn learned Brahmanas and abuse and insult us by calling us lowly and foolish. Brother Braja fits this description quite well, though. Although he's such a well-educated man, he seems to have sold himself to these sly loincloth people. I, Vaini Madhava, will reform Brajanath, and these Babajis as well. Thinking like this, Vaini Madhava entered one of the kutiyas, which happened to be the one in which Sri Raghunath Das Babaji was sitting on a mat made of banana leaves, chanting his Hari Nam. A person's character is evident from his face, and the aging Babaji could understand that Kali personified had entered in the form of this son of a Brahmana. Vaishnavas consider themselves lower than a blade of grass. They offer respect to those who insult them, and they pray for the well-being of an opponent, even if he tortures them. Accordingly, Babaji Maharaj respectfully offered Vaini Madhava a seat. Vaini Madhava had no Vaishnava qualities at all, so after sitting down, he offered his blessings to Babaji Maharaj considering himself above all Vaishnava etiquette. Baba, what is your name? What brings you here? inquired Babaji Mahashai informally. Vaini Madhava became furious by being addressed informally, and he said angrily, O oh, Babaji, can you become equal to the Brahmanas just by wearing a kopin? Never mind. Just tell me, do you know Brajanath Naya Panchanana? Babaji, Understanding the reason for his annoyance, Please excuse this old man. Don't become offended by my words. Yes, Brajanath sometimes comes here, by his own mercy. Vaini Madhava Don't think that he's a simpleton. He comes here with ulterior motives. He is being polite at first to gain your confidence. The Brahmanas of Belkapura are extremely annoyed at your behavior, and they have consulted with each other and decided to send Brajanath to you. You are an old man. Just be careful. I will keep coming from time to time to inform you how their conspiracy progresses. Don't tell him about me, otherwise you will run into even deeper trouble. I will take leave for today. So saying, Vaini Madhava got up and returned to his home. Later that afternoon, while Brajanath sat on the veranda after his meal, Vaini Madhava suddenly appeared, as if from nowhere, sat next to him, and struck up a conversation. Brother, I went to Mayapur for some business today, he began. There I saw an old man, maybe Raghunath Das Babaji. We were talking about things in general, and then the conversation turned to you. The things he said about you. I have never heard such repulsive things being spoken about any Brahmana. In the end, he said, I will bring him down from his high Brahminical status by feeding him leftovers from many low-caste people. 
Fie on him. It is not proper for a learned man like you to associate with such a person. You will ruin the high prestige of the Brahmanas if you act like this. Rajanath was astounded to hear Vaini Madhava say all this. For some unknown reason, his faith and respect for the Vaishnavas and old Babaji Maharaj only doubled, and he said gravely, Brother, I am busy at present. You go now. I will hear everything from you tomorrow and make a decision then. Vaini Madhava went away. Brajanath now became fully aware of Vaini Madhava's two-tongued nature. He was well versed in the Nyaya Shastra, and although he had a natural dislike for wickedness, the thought that Vaini Madhava would help him on the path to Sanyas had induced Brajanath to be friendly towards him. Now, however, he understood that all Vaini Madhava's sweet words had been for a particular motive. After further thought, Brajanath realized that Vaini Madhava was acting deceitfully because he was involved in the marriage proposal. That must be why he had gone to Mayapur, to sow the seed of some secret plot. He prayed in his mind, O Bhagavan, let my faith at the lotus feet of my Gurudev and the Vaishnavas remain firm. May it never be reduced by the disturbance of such impure people. He remained absorbed in these thoughts until evening. Then he started out for Srivasanga, arriving there in deep anxiety. Back in Mayapur, after Vaini Madhava had left, Babaji thought, This man is certainly a Brahma Rakshasa. Rakshasa Kalim Ashritya, Jayante Brahma Yonishu. Taking shelter in Kali Yuga, Rakshasas take birth in Brahmana families. This statement of Shastra certainly holds true for that person. His face clearly shows his pride in his high caste, his false ego, his envy of Vaishnavas, and his religious hypocrisy. His short neck, his eyes, and his deceptive way of talking actually represent his internal state of mind. Ah, this man is a complete Asura by nature, whereas Brajanath is such a sweet-natured person. O oh Krishna, O oh Gauranga, never give me association of such a person. I must warn Brajanath today. As soon as Brajanath reached the Kutia, Babaji called out to him affectionately, Come, Baba, come, and embraced him. Brajanath's throat choked with emotion, and tears started flowing from his eyes as he fell down at Babaji's feet. Babaji picked him up very affectionately and said gently, A black-complexioned Brahmana came here this morning. He said some agitating things and then went away again. Do you know him? Brajanath, Prabhu, your good self told me earlier that there are different kinds of jivas in this world. Some of them are so envious that without any cause they find satisfaction in troubling other jivas. Our brother Vaini Madhava is one of the leaders in that category. I will be glad if we don't discuss him further. It is his very nature to criticize you to me and me to you and to cause disputes between us by manufacturing false accusations. I hope you didn't pay any attention to what he said. Babaji Ha Krishna, Ha Gauranga I have been serving the Vaishnavas for many days now, and by their mercy I have received the power to tell the difference between a Vaishnava and a non-Vaishnava. You don't need to say anything to me about this. Brajanath Please forget all this and tell me how a jiva can become free from the clutches of Maya. Babaji, you will get your answer in the seventh shloka of Das Mula. Yeda Brahmam Brahmam Hari Rasagalad Vaishnava Janang Kadachit Sampasyan Tad Anugamane Syadruchi Yataha Tada Krishna Vritya Tyajati Sanake Maika Dasham Svarupam Vibrano Vimalarasa Bogam Sakurute. When, in the course of wandering amongst the higher and lower species in the material world, a jiva is able to behold a Vaishnava absorbed in the flowing rasa of Sri Hari Bhakti, taste arises in his heart for following the Vaishnava way of life. By chanting Sri Krishna Nam, he gradually becomes free from his conditioning. Step by step, he then gains his intrinsic Chinmaya Swarup, transcendental form, and becomes qualified to taste the pure and spiritual rasa 
of direct service to Sri Krishna. Brajanath, I would like to hear some evidence from the Vedas to verify this. Babaji, it is said in the Upanishads, Samane Vrikshe Purusho Nimagno Nishaya Sochati Muyamanaha Justam Yadi Pashyati Anyam Isham Asya Mahimanam Etivita Shoka Mundaka Upanishad 3.1.2 and Svetashvatara Upanishad 4.7 The Jiva and the indwelling Paramatma both reside in the body like two birds in the same tree. The jiva is sunk in the bodily conception of life because of his attachment to material sense enjoyment. Bewildered by maya, he cannot find any means of deliverance, and thus he laments and falls down. When the jiva has darshan of the other person within his heart, namely the Supreme Lord, who is served eternally by his unalloyed bhaktas, he witnesses Krishna's uncommon glories. He then becomes free from all lamentation and attains his glorious position as Krishna's servant. Brajanath, this shloka states that when the jiva sees the worshipable Lord, he becomes free forever from all anxieties and directly perceives his magnificence. Does this imply liberation? Babaji, liberation means to be released from the clutches of maya. Only those who have the association of saintly people attain this liberation. But the real subject of research is the glorious position that one receives after attaining liberation. Muktya hitvan yata rupam svarupena vyavastitihi Srimad Bhagavatam 2.10.6 The jiva in his original constitutional form is a pure servant of Krishna. When he falls down into the darkness of nescience, he has to accept gross and subtle material bodies. Liberation means to abandon these extraneous forms completely and to be situated in one's original spiritual swarup. This half shloka explains that liberation means to abandon these other forms and to be situated in one's swarup. Attaining one's constitutional position is the necessity for the jiva. The work of liberation is complete the moment the jiva is released from the clutches of maya. Then, so many activities begin once he attains his natural constitutional position. This is the fundamental necessity of attainment, mul prayojan, of the jiva. Freedom from intense misery can be called liberation, but following liberation there is another stage in which a person achieves spiritual happiness, chit sukha. That state is described in the Chandogya Upanishad, 8.12.3. Evam evaishya samprasado, smach charirat samutaya, param jyoti rupa sampadya, svena rupena binish padyate, sa utama purusha sa tatra, parieti jaksan kridan rama mana. When the jiva achieves liberation, he transcends the gross and subtle material bodies and is situated in his own non-material spiritual state, complete with his spiritual effulgence. He then becomes transcendentally situated. In that spiritual atmosphere, he becomes absorbed in enjoyment, boga, activities, krida, and bliss, ananda. Brajanath What are the symptoms of those who are liberated from maya? Babaji, they have eight symptoms, which Chandogya Upanishad 871 describes as follows. Ya atma pahata papma, vijaro vimrutyo vishoko, vijigatso bipasaha, satya kama satya sankalpaha, son vestavyaha. The liberated soul has eight qualities. He is freed from all sinful activity as well as the addiction to sinful activities that arise because of the nescience of maya. He is not subject to the miseries of old age. He always remains young and fresh and has no tendency to decay. He never comes to an end or dies. He is never morose. He has no sensual desires. He has a natural inclination towards serving Krishna with no other desire 
and all of his desires become realized. These eight qualities are absent from the Bada Jiva. Brajanath It is said in the Dashmula Shloka, the good fortune of the Jiva, who is wandering aimlessly in the material world, arises when he meets a Rasik Vaishnava who relishes the nectar of Hari. One might raise the objection that one could eventually attain Hari Bhakti by performing pious activities such as Astanga Yoga and cultivating Brahma Gyan. Babaji, these are Krishna's own words. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, na rod hayati mam yoga, na sankyam dharma evacha, na svadhyaya stapastyago, nesta puritam na dakshina, vratani yagnas chandam si, tirtani niyamaya maha, yata varunde satsanga, sarva sanga pahohi mam. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.12.1-2 Sri Bhagavan said, I am not controlled by those who perform yoga, study Sankhya philosophy, perform religious duties and pious activities, study the Vedas, perform penances and austerities, practice renunciation or accept sannyas, perform sacrifice and welfare activities, give donations in charity, practice fasting and other vows, perform yajna, chant confidential mantras, go on pilgrimage, and follow all the rules and regulations for spiritual life. However, one who accepts satsanga, which destroys all material attachments, can control me. How much can I say? Astanga yoga can slightly satisfy me indirectly, but sadhu sangha controls me completely. It is also stated in the Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, 8.51, Yasya yat sangati pumso, mani vats yat satad gunaha, svakul ardhyay tato diman, svayutan yeva sam shrayet. Just as a jewel or crystal reflects the color of the object with which it is in contact, so a person develops qualities according to the company he keeps. Therefore, by keeping association with pure sadhus, one can become a pure sadhu. Thus, the association of pure sadhus is the root cause of all good fortune. In the Shastras, the word Nishanga means to live in solitude. This implies that we should only live in the association of bhaktas. Nishanga means to leave all other association and to take the association of bhaktas. Even unintentional association with saintly people brings good fortune for the jiva. Sango ya shamshmitye he tur, asatsu vihito diya, sa eva sarushu krito, ni sangatvaya kalpate. Srimad Bhagavatam 3.23.55 The association of materialists is the cause of bondage in the material world, even though one may not know that this is so. Similarly, association with saintly people, even if it happens by chance or unknowingly, is called Nisanga. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.32 Naisham matistavad uru kramangrim Sprisatyanartha pagamo yadarthaha Mahiya shampada rajobishekam Niskinchanam nam navrinita yavat the lotus feet of Urukram, who is glorified for his uncommon activities, destroy all anartas in the heart. However, those who are very materialistic cannot be attached to his lotus feet until they smear their bodies with the dust from the lotus feet of great souls who are absorbed in Bhagavat Prem and who are completely freed from material attachments. And Srimad Bhagavatam 10.48.31 states, Nahyam mayani tirtani, na deva mrich chila maya, te purnanchu ruka lena, darshanad evasadavaha. One is purified by the holy places where rivers such as the Ganga flow, and by the stone and clay deities of devatas only after rendering them reverential service over a long period of time. However, when one has darshan of a Shuddha Bhakta, he is purified immediately. 
That is why Srimad Bhagavatam 10.51.53 also says, Bhava pavargo brahmato yada bhavej, janasya tarhyachuta satsamagamaha, satsangamo yarhi tadaiva sadgatao, paravare shet vayijayate mati. O infallible Lord, the jiva has been wandering in this world of birth and death since time without beginning. When the time comes for him to leave this cycle of life and death, he associates with your Shuddha Bhaktas. From the moment that he achieves this association, his mind becomes firmly fixed on you, who are the sole and supreme shelter of the surrendered Bhaktas, the controller of all and the cause of all causes. Baba, since time without beginning, the jiva who is eternally bound by Maya has been moving in the universe taking birth according to his karma, sometimes as a deva and sometimes in various animal species. From the time that he attains the association of saintly people, because of his past pious activities, Sukriti, he fixes his mind very strongly on Krishna, the controller of all. Brajanath, you have said that the association of Shuddha Bhaktas is achieved by Sukriti. What is Sukriti? Is it karma or knowledge? Babaji The Shastras say that there are two types of auspicious karma, Shuba karma, that are in accordance with Vedic injunctions. One causes the appearance of bhakti, while the other gives irrelevant, inferior results. Performance of pious activities such as Nitya and Naimitika karma, studying Sankhya and cultivating Jnana all give irrelevant results. The only auspicious activities that give bhakti as an end result, bhakti prada sukriti, are associating with Shuddha bhaktas and with places, times and things that bestow bhakti. When enough bhakti prada sukriti has been accumulated, it gives rise to Krishna bhakti. The other type of sukriti, however, is consumed after one enjoys its results, so it does not accumulate to give any permanent result. All the pious deeds in the world, such as charity, only result in achieving the objects of sense gratification. The Sukriti of impersonal speculation results in impersonal liberation. Neither of these kinds of Sukriti can give devotional service to Sri Bhagavan. Activities such as Sadhu Sangha and observing a codesty, Janmastami and Gorpurnima all help to develop one's saintly qualities. Tulsi Mahaprasad, Sri Mandir, holy places and articles used by sadhus, sadhu vastu, are all auspicious. Touching them or obtaining their darshan are pious deeds that give rise to bhakti. Brajanath, can a person obtain bhakti if he is tormented by material problems and takes shelter of Sri Hari's lotus feet in full knowledge to become relieved of his problems? Babaji, the jiva harassed by the afflictions of the goddess of illusion may somehow understand through discriminating intelligence that worldly activities are simply troublesome and that his only solace is Krishna's lotus feet and the feet of his Shuddha Bhaktas. Knowing this, he takes shelter of his lotus feet and the first step in this process of surrender is to accept the shelter of Shuddha Bhaktas. This is the principle of Bhakti Prada Sukriti, through which he obtains the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Whatever renunciation and wisdom he had originally were just a secondary means of obtaining Bhakti. Thus, the association of Bhaktas is the only way to attain Bhakti. There is no other recourse. Rajanath, if karma, jnana, renunciation and discrimination are secondary ways of achieving Bhakti, what is the objection to calling them Bhakti Prada Sukriti? Babaji, there is a strong objection. They bind one to inferior temporary results. The performance of karma has no permanent result, but it binds the jiva to the objects of sense gratification. Renunciation and empirical knowledge can only lead the jiva as far as knowledge of Brahman, and this conception of an impersonal supreme principle prevents him from attaining Bhagavan's lotus feet.
Consequently, these cannot be called bhakti prada sukriti. It is true that they sometimes take one to bhakti, but that is not the usual course of events. Sadhu Sangha, on the other hand, definitely does not award any secondary benefit, but forcibly brings the jiva towards Prem. It is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25.25 Satam prasangan mamavirya samvido bhavanti hritkarana rasayana kata tad josanad ashva pavarga vartmani shradharatiya bhakti anukramisyati in the association of Shura Bhaktas, the recitation and discussion of my glorious activities and pastimes are pleasing to both the heart and the ears. By cultivating knowledge in this way, one becomes established on the path of liberation and progressively attains Shraddha, then Bhav, and finally Prema Bhakti. Brajanath, I understand that Sadhu Sangha is the only Sukriti that gives rise to Bhakti. One has to listen to Harigata from the mouths of sadhus, and thereafter one obtains bhakti. Is this the proper sequence to progress in bhakti? Babaji, I will explain the proper way of progressing in bhakti. Listen attentively. Only by good fortune does the jiva who is wandering throughout the universe achieve the sukriti that gives rise to bhakti. One of the many limbs of pure bhakti may touch a jiva's life. For example, he may fast on a codice, or touch or visit the holy places of Bhagavan's pastimes, or serve a guest who happens to be a Shuddha Bhakta, or have the chance to hear Hari Nam or Hari Kata from the lotus mouth of an Akinchana Bhakta. If someone desires material benefits or impersonal liberation from such activities, the resultant Sukriti does not lead to devotional service. However, if an innocent person performs any of these activities, either unknowingly or out of habit, without desiring material sense gratification or impersonal liberation, these activities lead to the accumulation of Bhakti Prada Sukriti. After accumulating such Sukriti for many births, it becomes concentrated enough to give faith in pure Bhakti. And when faith in Bhakti is undivided, one develops a desire to associate with Shuddha Bhaktas. By association, one gradually becomes engaged in performing sadhan and bhajan, and this leads to the removal of anartas in proportion to the purity of chanting. When anartas are removed, the previous faith is purified further to become nishta, firm faith. This firm faith is also purified to become ruchi, spiritual taste. And by the sundarya, beauty of bhakti, this ruchi is strengthened and takes the form of ashakti, transcendental attachment. Transcendental attachment matures into rati or bhav. When rati combines with the appropriate ingredients, it becomes rasa. This is the step-by-step -step progression in the development of Krishna Prem. The principal idea is that when people with sufficient sukriti have darshan of Shuddha Bhaktas, they develop an inclination to proceed on the path of bhakti. One associates with a Shuddha Bhakta by chance, and this leads to initial shraddha, whereupon he gets the association of the bhaktas a second time. The result of the first association is shraddha, which can also be termed surrender, sharanagati. The initial sadhu sangha is brought about by contact with holy places, auspicious times and paraphernalia, and recipients of Sri Hari's grace, all of which are beloved by him. These lead to faith in his shelter. The symptoms of the development of such faith are described in the Bhagavad Gita, 1866. Sarva dharmam parityaja, mam ekam sharanam braja. Aham tvam sarve papa bio moksha isyami ma suchaha. Here the words sarva dharman imply worldly duties, smarta dharma, ashtanga yoga, sankhya yoga, gyan and renunciation. The jiva can never achieve his ultimate spiritual goal by practicing all these dharmas, which is why the instruction here is to give them up. Sri Krishna says, 
my form of pure and condensed Satchit Ananda, appearing as Braja Bilasi, the performer of wonderful pastimes in Braj, is the only shelter for the jivas. When one understands this, he gives up all desire for bhukti, material sense enjoyment, and mukti, impersonal liberation, and with undivided attention, takes shelter of me. This is known as pravriti rupa shraddha, the exclusive tendency to engage in Krishna's service. When such faith dawns in the jiva's heart, with tears in his eyes, he resolves to become a follower of a Vaishnava sadhu. The Vaishnava of whom he takes shelter at that point is the guru. Brajanath, how many types of anartas does a jiva have? Babaji, there are four types of anartas, Swarup Brahm, being illusioned about one's spiritual identity, Asat Trishna, thirst for temporary material enjoyment, Aparad, offenses, and Hridai Dubalya, weakness of the heart. The jiva's first anarta, namely Swarup Brahm, occurs when he forgets the understanding that I, the pure spiritual spark, am Krishna's servant and is carried far away from his original spiritual position. When the jiva considers that he and his dead material possessions are I and mine, he develops three types of asat trishna. These are the desire for a son, for wealth, and for celestial pleasures. There are ten types of aparad, which I will discuss later. The jiva is grief-stricken because of hridai dubalya, these four types of anartas are the nisargic fowl, the fruit of nisarg, or the acquired nature of the jiva who has been caught by ignorance, and they are removed gradually by cultivating Krishna consciousness in the association of Shuddha Bhaktas. The fourfold path of yoga consists of withdrawal from sense objects, pratyahara, self-control, yama, following various rules and regulations, niyama, and renunciation, vairagya. This process is not the proper means to free oneself from material anxiety, for it is difficult to attain perfection, and there is always a strong risk of falling down. The only way to become free from all anxiety is to cultivate pure Krishna consciousness in the association of Shuddha Bhaktas. Thus the jiva is freed from Maya's stranglehold, and his constitutional position is revealed to the extent that anartas have been removed from his heart. Brajanath, can people with no trace of anartas be termed liberated people? Babaji, please consider the following shloka. Rajobi samasankhyataha, partiver ihajantavaha, te shamye kechane hante, shreyo vai manujadayaha. Prayo mumukshavas te sham, ke chanaiva dvijotama, mumuksunam sahasre shu, kaschin muchite sidyati, muktanam apisidanam, narayana parayanaha, sudurlaba prasantatma, kotishvapi mahamune. Srimad Bhagavatam 6.14.3-5 Hey Bhagavan! There are as many jivas in this material world as there are grains of sand. Only a few of these are human beings, amongst whom only a few direct their efforts in search of a higher goal. Of those who are endeavouring for a higher goal, only a few rare individuals seek liberation from this world. And out of thousands of such people, hardly one is actually able to achieve siddhi, perfection, or mukti, liberation. Out of millions of perfected, liberated souls, it is difficult to find a single, peaceful, great soul who is fully dedicated to seva of Sri Narayan. Therefore, Narayan's bhaktas are very rare. A person free from all anartas is known as a Shuddha Bhakta. Such bhaktas are very rare indeed. Even among millions of muktas, one can hardly find a single bhakta of Sri Krishna. Therefore no association in this world is more rare than the association of Krishna's bhaktas. Brajanath 
Does the word Vaishnava imply a bhakta who has renounced family life? Babaji, a Shuddha bhakta is a Vaishnava whether he is a grihasta, householder, or sannyasi, renunciant, a brahmana or a chandala, rich or poor. A devotee is a Krishna bhakta to the degree that he has Shuddha Krishna bhakti, pure devotion for Krishna. Rajanath, you have already said that there are five types of jiva in Maya's stronghold, and you have also said that bhaktas performing sadhan bhakti and bhav bhakti are under Maya's control. At what stage are bhaktas, Maya mukta, liberated from Maya? Babaji, one is freed from the clutches of Maya from the very beginning of his devotional service. But vastu gata mukti, or complete liberation from the two material bodies, gross and subtle, is only obtained when one reaches the stage of full maturity in bhakti sadhan. Before this, a person is liberated to the extent that he is swarupgata, aware of his constitutional position. The jiva attains vastu gata maya mukti, complete freedom from maya, only when he is completely disassociated from the gross and subtle bodies. The stage of bhav bhakti dawns in the jiva's heart as a result of practicing sadhan bhakti. When the jiva is firmly established in bhav bhakti, he gives up his gross body, and after that he gives up the subtle body and becomes established in his pure spiritual body, chitsarira. Consequently, the jiva is not fully free from maya's control, even in the beginning stage of bhav bhakti, because a trace of the conditioning of maya always remains as long as the jiva is performing sadhan bhakti. The authorities in our line have carefully considered sadhana bhakti and bhav bhakti and have included bhaktas practicing both these stages amongst the five stages of conditioned souls. The materialists and the impersonalists are definitely included amongst the five categories of conditioned souls. The only path of deliverance from the clutches of maya is bhakti for Sri Hari. The jiva has been put under Maya's control because he is offensive and the root of all offense is forgetting that I am Krishna's servant. The offenses can only be eradicated if one has Krishna's mercy. Only then can one be freed from Maya's control. The impersonalists believe that one can gain liberation from Maya by cultivating knowledge, but this belief has no basis. There is no possibility of becoming free from Maya without His mercy. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 10 to 32 to 33. Yenye Ravindaksha Vimukta Maninas Tvayasta Bhavad Avishuddha Budaya Aruya Krichchrena Parampadam Tata Patantya Donadrita Yusmad Angraya O Lotus Eyed Lord, those who proudly think that they are liberated, but do not render devotional service unto you, certainly have impure intelligence. Although they perform severe austerities and penances, and rise up to the spiritual position of impersonal realization of Brahman, they fall down again, because they have no respect for devotional service to your lotus feet. Tata te madhava tavakak vachid Rashyanti margat tvai bada sorida tvaya bigupta vicharanti nirbaya vinayaka nikipa muradasu prabho. O Madhava, your dear most bhaktas, who have true love for your lotus feet, are not like those proud gyanis, for they never fall down from the path of devotional service. Since you protect them, they move about fearlessly stepping on the very heads of those who obstruct their path, so that no obstacle can check their progress. Brajanath, how many different types of jivas are liberated from Maya? Babaji, two kinds of jivas are free from Maya's control. Nitya Mukta, the jivas who were never under Maya's control, and Bada Muktas, those who were once under Maya's control, but are now free. The Nitya Mukta Jivas are divided again into two categories. Aishwarya Gata, those who are attracted by Bhagavan's feature of opulence and majesty, and Madhurya Gata, 
those who are attracted by his feature of sweetness. Those jivas who are attracted by Krishna's Aishwarya are personal associates of Sri Narayan, the master of Vaikuntha. They are particles of spiritual effulgence emanating from Sri Mula Sankashan, who resides in Vaikuntha. Those who are attracted by Bhagavan's Madhurya are personal associates of Sri Krishna, the master of Golok, Vrindavan. They are particles of spiritual effulgence manifesting from Sri Baladev, who resides in Golok, Vrindavan. There are three kinds of Bada Mukta Jivas, Aishwarya Gata, those who are attracted to Bhagavan's features of opulence and majesty, Madhurya Gata, those who are attracted to Bhagavan's feature of sweetness, and Brahma Jyoti Gata, those who are attracted to Bhagavan's impersonal effulgence. Those who are attracted to his opulence during their period of regulated service become eternal associates of Sri Narayan, the master of the spiritual sky, and they achieve Salokya Mukti, the opulence of residing on his planet. Jivas who are attracted to Sri Krishna's sweetness during their period of sadhan attain direct service to him when they are liberated in the eternal abodes of Vrindavan and other similar abodes. Jivas who attempt to merge into the impersonal effulgence during their period of sadhan attain Sayuja Mukti when they are liberated. They merge into his effulgence and are thus completely destroyed in the form of Brahma Sayuja. Rajanath what is the ultimate destination of the unalloyed bhaktas of Sri Gaur Kishore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Babaji, Sri Krishna and Sri Gaur Kishore are non-different in their tattva, absolute nature. They are both shelters of Madhurya Ras. However, there is a slight difference between them because Madhurya Ras has two prakoshts. One is the mood of Madhurya, sweetness, and the other is the mood of Odarya, magnanimity. Sri Krishna's Swarup is manifest where Madhurya is prominent, and Sri Gauranga's form is manifest where Odarya is prominent. Similarly, the transcendental Vrindavan also has two prakoshts, divisions, Sri Krishna's abode and Sri Gora's abode. The Nitya Siddha and Nitya Mukta associates who reside in Sri Krishna's abode are attracted first to Madhurya and then to Odarya. The Nitya Siddha and Nitya Mukta associates who reside in Sri Gora's abode are blissfully absorbed in Odarya and then Madhurya. Some of them reside in both abodes simultaneously by expansions of the self, Swarup Vyuha, while others reside in one spiritual form in only one abode and not in the other. Those who only worship Sri Gora during their period of sadhan only serve Sri Gora when they achieve perfection, while those who serve Sri Krishna during their period of sadhan serve Sri Krishna on achieving perfection. However, those who worship the forms of both Sri Krishna and Sri Gora during their period of sadhan manifest two forms when they attain perfection and reside in both abodes simultaneously. The truth of the simultaneous oneness and difference of Sri Gora and Sri Krishna is a very confidential secret. When Brajanath had heard all these teachings about the state of the jivas who are liberated from Maya, he could no longer keep his composure. Brimming with emotion, he fell down at the elderly Babaji's lotus feet. Crying profusely, Babaji Mahashai picked him up and embraced him. It was already quite late in the night. Brajanath took leave of Babaji Mahashai and went home totally engrossed in meditating on Babaji's instructions. When Brajanath reached home, he took his meal, and while doing so, he warned his grandmother sternly, Grandmother, if you people want to see me here, stop all this talk about my marriage, and do not keep any sort of contact with Vaini Madhava. He is my greatest enemy, and from tomorrow I will never speak with him again. You should also neglect him. Brajanath's grandmother was very intelligent. Understanding Brajanath's mood, she decided to postpone any question of marriage. From the kind of sentiments that he is displaying, she thought, if he is forced too much, he might leave for Vrindavan or Varanasi. Let Bhagavan decide as he will. 
Thus ends the seventeenth chapter of Jiva Dharma, entitled Pramaya, the Jivas Free from Maya.